Here's Bobcad V26. The first thing you're presented with is the job setup wizard. So the very first thing you want to do is have the machine set as the machine you're going to want to use. The best thing, I must, let's assume that your machine is a three axis mill, an X, Y, and a Z with no special configuration. So start with the BC 3X mill machine. And now here you could either enter the stock wizard or just say OK. And now you're presented with a default job tree. When you choose that machine, it's going to have a post processor associated with it. This is what changes your tool path into G code. Or it's what there's an engine that changes your tool path into G code. This is the text file that's used to format the G code. There's all types of post processors to choose from. Getting the right post processor is going to be what's going to take you some time at first. Just to find out the process though, just leave it at the default Bobcad 3 axis mill post processor. The next thing you're going to want to do is create stock. Now, um, there's different ways the stock wizard is going to work. You can either manually define all the stock by punching in your own numbers or generating you can create geometry that it will generate the stock out of I like to always create the geometry geometry that's gonna be my stock first instead of manually punching in numbers so let's just say let's create a four inch wait four inch tall by six inch wide block that's centered in the workspace okay so let's say that's that's going to be the dimensions of my stock and then so now what I'm going to do is launch the stock wizard and you can do that from right here it would actually tell you if you tried to add any toolpath or features right now it's going to tell you that you have to run the stock wizard first and then launch it so let's just say my stock is I could choose wireframe which means I can choose this right here but since I know it's rectangular, it's gonna. I just want a rectangular shape. Then I'm gonna let it select and dimension the stock and place it out of the geometry that's in the workspace. So it says auto from workpiece. Now whatever I have out there is gonna create the stock to the bounds of that and since I drew my stock it's automatically made a 6 by 4 and it has the height set at 1 inch um, you can and you can click this box right here I can pick this geometry or I can click enter and retype those dimensions to be anything I want I can also at this point enter offsets in all of them so if I want to add more stock to the outside of that automatic selection like a half inch all the way around I can do that by entering those, uh, the values uh, 0.5 in these values here and my stock will grow by that much after you click next on that then you have the machine you're in the actual machine setup here you can set the origin wherever you want you see it's defaulted right now on the center top of that so for instance if I wanted the origin of my stock if I set it over here as my zero point I can click on this origin then I come over here and all these things are pickable and I can pick it here and the origin moves over okay so let's just say that you don't want that center you like to set it up in that lower left corner I'm gonna take it and here you're gonna have to set your clearance plane it's set at one right now so I like to we set ours at just point 0.1 because we don't really use um, that that way we have a very small machine so now I have a stock with its origin set zero over here and it's defined um, well so now that I have stock uh, and so as you can see there's a lot to setting up stock so that's a whole nine tutorials in itself which you can find at Al DePaulo's YouTube site a lot but just to get you going fast now you can define some very simple stock and you have to define stock because thing your code output will be affected by the stock defined and everything unlike past ones so now let's I'm gonna just make a simple 2d profile 
on an oval. So I'm going to just take a default oval and make one right there. It shows up in the in the center of my stock there. And so now um, what do I do is now I need to add a feature to my machine setup. And by the way, you can start adding multiple machine setups and stuff, but again, that's later. So in V26, um, you want to add a two-axis feature. So let's select that. It's going to start by asking me to select my geometry for this one. And so let's shift click that oval right there. And I'm going to hit the space bar for OK. You can also right click and choose OK. So I've selected geometry. Here's the paths for all the setup. The total depth on 2D. You can either pick it if I had geometry that had my bottom or I can type it in. If there's nothing there picking it, I just have 2D flat geometry. It defaults to 5. So I can always come back to this later. I'm just going to leave it at the default there. Your rapid plane and your feed plane. Next, it'll take you to the machine strategy where it's automatically populated it with a profile rough and a profile finish. Um, you have all of these will come, all of these 2D operations available will come with something default. But let's just say I'm going to profile it and let's just say I want to delete, I can delete everything and now I can order whatever I want the current operations by selecting over here so I can actually make a mix of all those within this one feature and this side over here will change so let's just say all I want to do is a profile finish okay so I selected profile finish over here and I click the button to move it over into the current operation from the available operations now I click next and you'll see my my feature tree over here within the feature dialog has changed to only contain a single profile finish. Now all my next moves will go in to set that. So let's just say a half inch flat. I'm not, there's no, I have no need to change any of the defaults. Uh, we're using system compensation. So it's going to automatically put it to the left of the side of that chain, which is going to be on the interior, I think. And, you know, these these things will determine whether it's cut is the profiling on the inside or the outside there's ways to control that I'm just gonna leave that here's that bottom depth is coming it's not editable from here it's edited from back up in that um, original uh, geometry selection I think or no the the feature there so I can pick it or change it and then uh, I can make side allowance for that's going to allow me to do finish passes later on. That would normally come into play when you have a rough first. And so again, I'm just leaving the defaults because you're wanting the um, the general uh, way to get G code out. So I can either click finish right here to do more work with something else, or I can compute that toolpath. So you'll see I generated a finish operation with the offset on the left side of that chain which is on the inside of that thing so essentially the inside of that oval will get a finish edge around it there correct and so now what I want to do is I can right click over and now that I've generated a toolpath I want to post code so I just come up here I right click excuse me I miss I right click milling job and I say post and then it generates the code which shows up down here in the posting manager right so there's your code you can kinda give it a quick review through here there's no editing or anything in here it's just displaying it to you so from here if you have uh, predator CNC editor I can I right clicked it inside this code window and I can edit it which will open up my predator which is an add-on purchase um, I don't I don't know how it still works whether the there's still the basic free one uh, that comes with it or not uh, but I have the f the full-blown one where I can back plot it after that or you just click save and you get an NC file um, save as NC or I can type in uh, the name now where do it you know I want to save it on my desktop and then I save my NC file I think if you want the extension to be tap that's an edit you have to do uh, somewhere in here where the NC file extension you would make it dot tap but Bobcad now by default just uses NC so that's up to you this is where you change the file extension of the G code 
that you save by right clicking and say save as and it gives me the option to save bobcad.nc and there's your code that you can load into your machine so there's the full process for getting G code out of Bobcad. Um, the post pro changing the post processor is going to be something you're going to want to do that we talked about already with your WinCNC. So this is the default output from the default Bobcad 3-axis mill post processor. Right here you can right click this and edit it and select a different post or um, later you can start a thread that talks about you can either if you just bought v26 you should be able to contact bobcat and get them to help you editing one with the code you want or you can present it in this forum as a thread with help me get these numbers changed how do these numbers change and how does all this output happen from the post processor from bobcat now because it's a little different than from v20 so all of this output can be the format of it can be configured and changed to work with your machine. Okay, talk later.